Okay, so I'm uh, going to make a video here. I've been studying a lot on solar generators uh, on YouTube and on a couple of people's websites. And I found that this solar generator technology right now it hasn't, it hasn't really changed in the last 20 years. Okay, and, um, and basically what somebody calls a solar generator is a collection of devices which usually is going to include a solar panel of some type, uh, whether you got a single panel like these, or maybe a double unit here that I have uh, uh, riveted to a piano hinge and then attached together. I'll go into a little bit of that. Um, or, you know, like really small panels that get daisy chained into something. Um, the, the, there's a lot of people out there who are making videos where you know they seem to prevent present this stuff like like they invented it and they didn't okay most of the time you get you get your uh, component parts at a solar supply place if there is one in your area which most of the time there isn't however the harbor freight chain of stores if you're fortunate enough to be in an area that has harbor freight stores they have a lot of the stuff. Uh, Fry's Electronics will have a lot of the stuff. It's exactly the same as what Harbor Freight sells. They just charge more for it. Okay. Um, in here in the Portland, Oregon area, we get Harbor Freight coupons in, the, in a local newspaper. Usually, it's a, a page that looks like this. Um, Twenty percent off any single item that's in a store. I don't think you can do that mail order, and then usually some kind of freebie item. Here, uh, this particular one gets the the seven function multimeter, and if you plan on making a significant purchase out of this stuff, and you, you can't find these coupons anywhere, uh, you can find them on eBay. Okay, there's people that print, they resell them. All, all you need is a barcode from it to print out. You can also join their little club thing and get the coupons. The coupons are important. A lot of times they won't volunteer uh, that they have a coupon for something in the store. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're you're kind of on your own with that. So um, the cheapest and easiest solar generator is it has to involve a battery. It has to involve solar panels of one kind or another. It should involve an inverter of one kind or another, and then some kind of gauges or indicator lights to let you know what your panels are doing. Now, Harbor Freight sells these little five to one power boxes. Um, it, it it's it's got a battery. It's got an inverter built in. Um, there isn't a side of this that isn't used somehow in that whole little system. Little 400 watt inverter will run pretty much any small computer system that you want to run. But you want to plug in a laptop and a printer, uh, no problem at all. Okay, it's going to do it. Uh, yeah, it's it's a full function 400 watt inverter. Runs internally, has its own cooling fan. If the voltage drops, the inverter cuts off before the battery totally dies. Now, replacing the battery in this unit is pretty difficult. So, when you buy it, just expect to get some use out of it. This isn't something you should just buy and stockpile. You might as well use it. I made some other videos comparing these power boxes to, uh, let's say, DeWalt and Ryobi 18 volt batteries. Because the lithium ion batteries cost about the same as one of these things. They're usually uh, right around a hundred bucks. Um, a little over, a little under, depending on whether you're catching it on sale or not. Uh, this also has a 12 volt power source. It has a 12 volt jumper cable source on, on both sides, which uh, we can go into as far as the charging system goes. But the easiest and simplest way to charge one of these things up and make a little solar generator out of it is to get a couple of their cheap solar panels although these are only 1.5 amps each um, they come with these little these little plugs this one's blinking because it's got a little bit of sunlight hitting it and you plug one into each one of these um, each one of these 12 volt receptacles right there and then that blinking is an indicator that tells us that it's uh, it's getting a little bit of sunlight here you can see the brightness of that as I put it out in, in a window. But that system is, is not going to charge your power box faster than you can run it. The best you're going to get out of that is to keep this thing maintained. And then you still have to put it on some kind of hard charging to um, actually bring it back up after it's been used. Otherwise, it's going to take you a couple days. Now, what you can do is you can set yourself up with three or four of these power boxes, 
and then a more powerful charge controller and some more powerful batteries uh, or uh, solar panels that can daisy chain together. Now, uh, Harbor Freight, through their um, uh, Thunderbolt Solar, they, they now have a system where they have uh, charge controllers like, like this, it's a little 7 amp charge controller. It can, uh, it can handle up to 100 watts worth of panels, which means, like I've got some 50 watt panels that uh, you'd have to play around with the little cable ends. They, they come with um, what's called SAE connectors, these type of connectors. This is what the Harbor Freight equipment uses. The problem with these type of connectors is that when you get their kit, which, which has a bunch of cables, a bunch of connectors, cigarette letter plugs, an extension cable, a couple of battery clamp cables, it's convenient, it's complete. Um, however, if, if you're not really careful in double checking your polarity on this stuff, you, you can reverse polarity on the cables and screw things up. Now, part of this little kit is they include a stubby cable with an indicator light so that you can, uh, you can check the consistency of your polarity when you, uh, when you, when you plug it into stuff. However, I, I still suggest just keeping a multimeter around. Uh, make sure you get your polarity figured out on, on the little connectors down here. Um, but this one's all set up for 12 volt. I, I haven't been able to get good amp readings out of this thing. So um, it, ju it just basically, I use a multimeter for um, voltage and then a little bit of ohms uh, continuity or impedance. But, it, you know, for basic voltage reading, this thing's just fine. The, um, the, now, if you want to step up a little bit, you, you need a more powerful charge controller. And this this came from a real solar company. Okay, it's a solar land uh, solar charge controller. Runs uh, depending on which model you get, and they actually have the same housing, anywhere from eight to fifteen amps. Now this one's been set up for ten amp. Um, although the back of the system thing says eight, the front uh, it, it uses a ten amp fuse. It was sold to me as a ten amp unit. Apparently the 8 amps is very conservative rating. The 10 amps is what they feel it can handle on a regular basis. They can go up to 15 without without permanent damage to the unit. But what will happen over 10 amps um, is uh, the possibility of, of it'll pop the fuse or, or, or trip a little breaker in there. But this unit here, when you go to wire it up, the skinny little skinny little uh, 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 SAE connector type things, that that's not enough wire to carry the power. Okay, that's that's definitely not enough wire to carry the power. Now, it, it when when you're running up to a 10 amp system, you can go to stores and look at power cords, and whether it's a 120 or 220 power cord or something like that, look at the amp ratings, and you'll find. Power cords that are rated for, um, you know, 15, 20 amps. 30 amp power cords, usually some kind of a 220 thing. But this is what I'm going to call kind of a medium power system when we're, we're looking at making a, a solar generator. And on this, you can get your, um, your 15 amp power cord 12 AWG cables. Find, find the thickest ones that will come with these three prong plugs, okay? And it's just a matter of doing a little bit of cutting and splicing. You, you have to remember that you're shifting from automotive wiring to house wiring. On automotive wiring and a lot of electronic device wiring, black is negative, red is positive. Okay. On this stuff, black is negative, red is positive. However, sometimes, depending on how these little connectors go and how many you've jumped into a line, they, they may reverse the polarity and you've got to keep track of that. The only way that you're going to prevent that polarity reversing problem is either, well, there's two things. One, you have a male-female thing for the connectors, or you, um, uh, uh, you, you have a type of prong connector where it can't be rotated and put in backwards. Okay, so if you're using regular house extension cords as a basis for your wiring, there's two dangers you got to be aware of. One... 12 volt systems can backfeed power, which would mean that if I'm, uh, if I have this thing hooked up to a battery, and and I've cut a, a dog bone adapter 
so that we have um, receptacles on one end, except that now because this is part of a solar system, these are all 12 or 24 volt. And we'll go into um, converting cordless power tools to work as 12 volt corded power tools. That way you can use them with high capacity deep cycle batteries and car batteries. Uh, a lot of them will, will run up to 24 volt without burning out. Um, if, you, if you run a, um, um, pair, a series uh, based power system. However, I'm setting this up as 12 volt. And as long as you're pushing enough amps to run that little power tool, you can do it. Okay. And then we, we got to use male side somewhere. But you, you, the thing you got to look out for is that unlike an MC4, MC5 connector, where the metal part is enclosed, even on the, the male or female end, it doesn't matter. There's no ex, ex, uh, uh, there's no protruding metal on one of these things. There is protruding leads on on regular 220 power or, or 120 power cords. Uh, either way, whether it's a 220 or 120 power cord. So what happens is when something like this is hooked up into a 12 volt system, you've got batteries and panels in the system. You run the possibility of this being hot. Okay, this this being a hot lead, so you you, you got to be careful before you power everything up because you, you you are possibly dealing with hot leads. The give back on this is it's a lot less expensive to deal with these type of connectors and just scavenge them off power cords. The other thing is they tend to be very water resistant and water tolerant, so um, you know you, you got to uh, and it can be plugged and unplugged an infinite number of times and still get a pretty decent connection. So in hooking these panel boxes up, what I did is, is these are 14 gauge cable, which is, or it, it might even be 16 gauge cable. Now, when you're running solar panels like this, you, you want to use the thickest cable um, that you can reasonably get a hold of that isn't going to be just incredibly difficult to deal with. Yeah, there are people that will run as thick as 10 gauge cable to hook up a... Um, uh, a panel uh, box, but I, I recommend it. I think it's 12 or 14. Now, this is using 16, and for a short run, that's okay. The other thing is, this isn't really a, a super high amperage system. Between the two of these in full sunlight, it's 10 amps, which is still within the specifications for the cable. Simple nine foot cable that I cut. So, what happens is when we install these okay watching our polarity which is black is positive white is negative we're not using the green at all the only reason i'm i'm leaving the green on there and i'm using three prong cables is to make sure that i never reverse my polarity when i'm plugging the plugs in now the, one of the reasons i use a little three three-way connector here is because uh, what i would do if i'm going to run an additional pair of panels here is I've, I've got to have a lead that's going to run out to my charge controller but I could also bring a lead in from another pair of panels okay and as long as is we've got the polarity exactly the same on the other panels I would just have to make a power cord that that have the other pair of panels set up identical to this and then a jumper wire that goes between both pairs of panels and the jumper wire is going to have to have uh, male connectors on both ends, which is not hard to do. You cut it off, you splice it, you, you clean it up your splice. But to go from my panel to my charge controller, I, I'm just going to use a regular power cord. Okay, so in using a regular power cord, I would simply plug this in right here. This then becomes hot with the power from both panels okay the other end of it can then plug into the receiving side of my charge controller right here and there there we go we've got that now the only reason the indicator lights aren't coming on right now is that i i don't have sunlight shining on my panels and i'm going to make another video where i show that but Initially, on a medium-powered unit, I'm showing how we can do this using regular power cords. We're not having to go out and make or cut special connectors or do any unusual amounts of splicing, except that here you can see where dog bone got spliced in. 
so that our power leads coming in come from here. I use the thickest cable on, on one that I could get a hold of, but also realize on these portable cables there's a lot of thickness, but a lot of that's just the insulation. Um, the other thing, th this isn't for outdoor use, so what would happen is when you run a power cord through here, um, you, you need to be a little bit generous with yourself on panel size because you, you are going to get some power loss through that cord. You're not going to get much, if any, power loss through those connectors compared to regular solar panel connectors because on, on these things you've got a broad surface area contacting when you plug one of these things in. So the other thing I would do is once everything's attached to a charge controller is I would take some liquid electrical tape, I would gob that around all those little screw heads, cover them up, and reduce our chances of any contact on something like that. The, uh, and this charge controller will then be in a box with the battery and the, and the inverter, which I'm going to show uh, a little bit later on when I, when I get that thing fully built. So on lower powered units, you can get away with uh, using these little connectors. Medium power units, you can use um, house and tool, workshop, electrical cords. The thing I really like about these indoor-outdoor cords, that's a cord that's normally used with Christmas lights. They, they will work on DC power. You just got to make sure that you are consistent with how you're going to hook up your polarity. And generally speaking, the, um, the white wire is negative, and that in 